Welcome to People Power in Politics. Hard talk, riveting interviews, community updates, in-depth analysis. That's People Power in Politics. We tell it to you as it is. No holds barred. You are the people. You have the power. We bring you the politics. To listen to our show, be a guest, or to advertise, visit www.pppradio.nyc. That's www.pppradio.nyc. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Good day and a warm welcome to everyone. Today we have a very special guest with us in studio, the Executive Director of Caribbean Cultural Center African Diaspora Institute, also known as CCCADI, Melody Capote. So lovely to have you with us, Ms. Capote. How are you? I'm well, thank you. Thank you for having us. So for those who don't know, just give us a brief overview of CCCADI and their mission and what they do. Thank you. Um, yeah, folks do know what's a CCCADI, or often referred to as CADI. Um, it is an organization, 47-year-old cultural organization that works toward advancing equity and racial and social justice for African descendants worldwide. We are based in East Harlem now, um, have had various homes throughout the city, but we know that Har the Harlem is the heartbeat of everything that has to do with black culture and we are the anchor institution on the east side of 125th Street. Lovely. So in reference to your Crossroads program, what inspired the program and how does it align with CCCADI's mission? Well, actually, uh, Crossroads was born out of um, direct response to artists of color, um, specifically during the pandemics, what we call the pandemics of both COVID-19 and the Black Lives Matter movement. And what we were finding was that um, many of our artists, as, as we know, I mean, but the, the notion of being an artist is usually that they're struggling and they're starving and usually don't have a place, a home for the art to be shown. So we serve as that platform. I mean, historically, we've been the place where artists have been able to show their work, if they're visual artists or a stage where we have a group from Trinidad and a group from Cuba and a group from Brazil showing the commonalities we share as people of African descent. So during the pandemic, what we found was that the artists were super concerned about various things. All of a sudden, our lives went on to this Zoom world, and many were concerned about protecting the in their intellectual property. Others were concerned, or in addition to being concerned about how we would be prepared as a community when the doors opened up again. And one of the things we were all very clear was that we were not going to go back to normal because normal was really never good for our communities. And so the when you talk about art and culture and that particular kind of cohort of artists and cultural workers, they wanted to be prepared or as prepared as possible as their colleagues um, in the field to be able to do the work and do it successfully and build. Um, after Hurricane Maria, in Port the, the devastation of Hurricane Maria in Puerto Rico, and since then, um, additional hurricanes and kind of natural disasters that have affected islands like Antigua, Cuba, Dominican Republic, and Haiti, what we were finding is that cultural workers were really, and, and artists were really looking for ways of being able to sustain themselves prior to and post these incidents and, and tragedies in our communities. And so the Crossroads program was born based in Puerto Rico, but as a way of working with supporting and promoting artists throughout the Caribbean basin. And it was really a direct response to artists saying they needed this help, they wanted this help. And with artists of color being the, at the center of the work that we do, this is how we chose to respond. So can you elaborate on the holistic healing justice approach used in Crossroads and its significance for Caribbean artists? When we talk about ho holistic, uh, holistic healing and holistic approaches to the work, we can't talk about being racially and socially just and not talk about our wellness and the well-being of our communities and particularly our artist community. So our approach is a de decolonizing and healing justice framework that aims to create a self-sustaining ecosystem through skills development and support. Um, and it's, it's, it allows us to enhance cultural and economic 
contributions of our Caribbean artists. So again, through <clears throat> the Crossroads program, and we have a program in New York called DEAR, which is the Digital Evolution Artist Retention Program, we're providing artists with the tools, the training, and the funding to be able to do this work at optimum level and be able to do it well. Um, and in wellness, that we are offering workshops that deal with healing the soul, healing the body, healing the mind, and addressing those concerns that um, are at the heart of all of the work that we do. What we, knew, what we do know about our cultural workers and artists and our art in general is that we're not institutions that, or we're not an institution that's about art for art's sake. The art that comes out of our communities is an art of resilience. Um, in many instances, an art of resistance. And during the Black Lives Matter um, movement prior to and, and since, right? Cause I think we've always been in a Black Lives Matter movement, but it's been an opportunity to help support artists to, through mental and emotional healing and support, through physical support, through workshops, um, being able to even create communities where they're talking with each other, not at each other or not being spoken to or at, but working together to create a holistic approach that gives them uh, a better way of being able to address the needs of a community, our general community, and their own needs as artists. So that's what we're intending to do with this, with this plan, is to address the whole person and not just the art. So you mentioned art is not just art, it's art of resilience and art of resistance based on our backgrounds. How does Crossroads foster cultural sustainability and innovation within the Caribbean artistic community? Well, what's important about Crossroads is that we've developed an international um, network, if you will. There's an international advisory committee that exists of representatives from Haiti, St. Croix, uh, Col Colombia, uh, Dominican Republic, Antigua, and it is with the expertise of those folks, those representatives in those islands that we're able to better shape what our programming and approach is. So we're hearing, for example, one of the very kind of common things that we take for granted here in the States is Wi-Fi and internet. <clears throat> Excuse me. Wi-Fi and internet. We know here in the States, we know here particularly in New York, there still exists a digital divide between communities of color and a more general population. But in the Caribbean, what we don't take into account is hurricanes, is the, um, you know, myself being from Puerto Rico and being in the island many times, particularly since um, Hurricane Maria, the um, uh, uncertainty of electricity. Uh, all of a sudden you're on a Zoom and all of a sudden you're not. Uh, you're in an elevator you're in, and all of a sudden, you know, you're, you're not. So that there are certain elements, what are climate justice issues, environmental issues, um, the colonial uh, concerns in our islands and communities that still affect us as a whole, being able to uh, allow for our artists and our communities in general to just thrive. So the hope is that with our network of artists and cultural workers throughout the Caribbean, of which now we represent 11 islands and we're looking to expand. Um, the, the, the idea is that we aren't creating programs that we think folks need. We're creating programs that's a direct response to what we're hearing in these various regions. So in some instances, they're common, kind of a common issue that needs to be addressed, addressed, and in others, they're very specific to that particular place. So that is kind of how we're approaching it. We, it's been almost three years in the making of Crossroads since we had the idea to want to do this, again, as an immediate response to what we were hearing artists felt they needed. Um, and when we, we started these programs, it was through the pandemic and a lot of Zooms and Google Meets, which had us meeting with artists beyond you know, we did not think we were going to be reaching artists in, in England, in Africa, in South America, and yet we were. Now as we have kind of come out of it and not so dependent on Zoom, uh, what we do know is, you know, what is happening for artists' lives in Barbados is very similar to what's happening with artists' lives in Puerto Rico and here in New York. So how do we address that to kind of ease 
the approach to success, right? However, that success is defined. In regards to a broader impact and future aspirations, you mentioned earlier lack of resources and an impact of natural disasters and what um, that has on the artists themselves who live in these not as industrialized societies as we do here in America. In what ways will Crossroads contribute to the economic empowerment of African descendant communities in the Caribbean? One of the ways um, that we've seen immediate has been our ability to assist with opening the doors to funders and funding opportunities that might not otherwise be as readily available to the artists and communities we work with. So it's still a struggle for us as well as an organization of color that is focused on racial and social justice. We have a difficult time getting funded as well, being a not-for-profit. But the um, working together and kind of creating these strategies that say, who is funding in these areas? Um, let's see if we can make the introductions. How do we assist, and this is a big one for artists, is, you know, I am an artist. I'm not about to write a proposal or a grant. Um, I have a hard time writing about myself or writing about my work. I have a really tough time marketing myself, you know, so kind of helping these, this group of significant workers because when we talk about the arts, let's not forget that it's the artists who have really come through as first responders. It, the art is healing, and in moments that we were in lockdown and kind of the very worst of times, artists have been the voice that for many of us, even if we think it or think we want to say it and don't, they do, right? We saw murals. We saw Black Lives Matter on the streets of New York. We, we saw it throughout the country. We saw it throughout the world. And it's the artist's voice and the artist's um, ability to be able to be a healing tool that we have to recognize. Again, I say that's why it's not just art for art's sake. So being able to be a, 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 a buffer, or I don't even like the word buffer, but the ones that are able to kind of crack that door open and be able to help train with the writing and the business development plans, because many of the artists are saying they see themselves as small businesses, and they are. Um, the hope is that we will be able to have that kind of impact with, with artists throughout the basin, but it's gotta be very tailored and specific because in each region, it's something very kind of specific to that particular place. So our hope is to be able to provide some funding as funding comes into us, it gets then funneled back out. We want to be able to provide re-granting opportunities, but also being able to um, make introductions to foundations and partners who might not otherwise know about these artists' places and things that are happening outside of the immediate area. How can individuals and organizations support the Crossroads Initiative and contribute to its mission? Well, Crossroads is a program of our organization, of CADI, and we do have a website, which is cccadi, that's cccad for diaspora I, dot org. And you can donate to the organization. And as we fundraise and bring monies in, it supports programs like Crossroads. Anyone located in the various islands that we are working with and representing who might be interested in being a sponsor or um, underwriting a program or even underwriting the work of a particular artist, we encourage it and we ask you to contact us at um, at the Caribbean Cultural Center African Diaspora Institute, and we will direct the funds directly to the Crossroads program. Thank you so much, Executive Director Melody Capote of CCCADI. It was lovely having you. Thank you for having me. People power in politics, hard talk, riveting interviews, community updates, in-depth analysis. That's people power in politics. We tell it to you as it is. No holes barred. You are the people, you have the power. We bring you the politics. To listen to our show, be a guest, or to advertise, visit www.pppradio.nyc. That's www.pppradio.nyc.